today, the the video that we're going to do is actually a request from a subscriber to the channel. Uh, I just want to put that out to anyone that if there are some videos you would like to see me do, by all means, put a comment in there, go to my Discord, whatever, uh, send me an email, let me know, and if I can make it happen, I will. This, uh, this person wanted to talk about how to ingest data in and then troubleshoot it. That's a little bigger question than just one video, so it'll be, I'm gonna be doing a, a few videos on this, but the concept is, in the ideal world, you're gonna go to ingest using add data on a Splunk instance. You're gonna make sure it's ingesting well in that uh, test system, then you're gonna put it in a monitoring. We'll talk about each one of these and it will work on the test system. And then you'll push all those changes. You're making all these little config changes. You're gonna bundle them up in an app and you're gonna push that out to the production system using a deployment server or manually deploying the app wherever you need to go. Um, that's the ideal world. There are always, that's when everything works smoothly and for this video, we're going to talk as if everything works smoothly. We're going to briefly talk about troubleshooting at the end, but we'll have some videos on how to troubleshoot uh, when it doesn't work ideally or the data isn't matching up perfectly, uh, things like that. So again, overview, we're going to make an app. Reason I want to make an app is all these things that we're going to do are going to make config files. They're going to modify your props, which is going to be your, it, going to be how source types are done. It's going to modify an inputs.comp file, and you're going to you don't want to have to try to figure out move that around and try to get that into another app. So my recommendation is when you know you're going to be ingesting data, create a dev app. Um, you're uh, you're going to do all that work that we're going to do in that app. And now when it's done, you just package up the app, push it out through a deployment server or manually install, uh, zip it up and install it on another machine. It just works out really easy. That's the best way to do it is every time you're going to be ingesting a specific file or files, uh, make an app for it and then do all the work. And I'll show you as we do it, we'll do all the work inside that app. Um, we're going to talk today about Splunk data ingestion process when it's easy, such as ingesting a JSON or a C CSV file. Often though, you'll get non-standard files. Those become a lot bigger problem, but um, we'll, we'll deal with those. Um, I have another video, pay attention to. Follow this process and then watch the other videos in the link below uh, and you'll, you'll get it. We'll, we'll cover non-standard logs. Um, when it's a JSON file, it, do you have a sample file? If you do, you are going to, this is going to be very, very simple. My recommendation is go to the system that's creating this JSON file, grab a snippet of it, and work with that sample file. If you have that, you're, everything just works so much easier. We'll load the sample file in, we'll set up the field names, and voila, we're good to go. The same pretty much for a CSV. If you have a sample file, um, there's really, if you don't, it's a little bit of work. You're gonna have to figure out some of the, you're gonna, it, it does get a little more, to, at work, but it's not that big a deal. Um, and then you can set up parsing on the search head and you deploy the configs where it's needed. Um, and then ultimately we'll talk about troubleshooting. But all right, so I have here, I've got myself some, I've got a CSV here, a lame sample CSV. If we look at it, we can see the data here more or less. It's got fields here. And we also have a a MySQL log in JSON format. So there we go. Easy enough. We're gonna go. Let's make this. Let's make this happen. So the first thing I said is, make yourself an app. So I'm gonna come in here. Apps, manage apps. I'm going to install an app from file. Oops, not install an app from file. I'm gonna create an app. Apps, manage apps. create an app and I'm going to call it Splunk, nope, sorry, um, lame, doesn't really matter what you call it, lame, YouTube, TA. Typically TA is the term they'll use for when you're dealing with ingestions and stuff like that. So I'll just keep that standard naming, I'm going to call it that, but it doesn't really matter what you call your thing, just so that you know what it is. Find a naming scheme and stay with it. 
make sure one dot use two dots it cannot be 1.0 it has to have major minor and sub whatever the third one is um, i'll put my name in there and ta for youtube demo ingesting of a csv and json okay i hit save I've made my app, and now I wanna make sure I stay in that. And so we should have a lame YouTube TA. And so everything we do, we wanna do inside this app. That way when it makes changes, it'll be in the app. All the, It'll make all the config files right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go settings. I'm gonna hit add data, and I'm gonna skip if you get that. Basically, the two ways you can, there's three ways, but uh, um, as a general rule, you'll, when you're doing it in this situation, you're going to upload the data. That's the first thing. Then you'll set up the file monitoring and make sure that's working, and then you'll push it out. And so we'll go first. We're going to get upload the data. This makes it really easy because you, you can see your stuff right here. There's very little things that can go wrong. Open this. I'm going to do the, the MySQL JSON first. I'll drag and drop it right in says I'm done, so I move on, hit next. And Splunk will actually read the file and try to tell you what it thinks it is. And it says, I think it's JSON. And you know what? That's exactly what it is. It went through and it parsed all those key values and created my field. So I can see, here's my SQL, here's the SQL commands, here's source desk ports, so all those fields are written right on in. That works. I'm good with that. Um, if it wasn't that field, if JSON wasn't determined, you could, you could look, you can go under, you can write JSON yourself in there. Uh, maybe it's a slightly different JSON file, um, but you can pick from any of these sources uh, what, what kind of data it might be. But ours was JSON, so and it found it, so we're good to go. And if it if you want to change the format, see, this is going to save it as underscore JSON. I don't want it to be JSON. I, I do want it to parse it like it's JSON. So I'm going to leave this, but I want it to be called something a little similar. So I'm going to go save as, and then instead of calling it JSON, I'm going to call it um, MySQL. Um, maybe I will say JSON because I want to put it in there. You don't need to put that in there. This is going to be my source type. So when I query my stuff, it's going to be whatever I want to call it. I don't want to deal with, uh, I don't want it to always be underscore JSON because maybe I want to search a bunch of indexes for stuff. I don't want this JSON being confused with another JSON file. So it's, it's useful. Now, even though it's been parsed as JSON, give it a new source type. And we can give it a description here, lame creations, uh, MySQL JSON for, and we can put it in the structured category. There were different categories. And notice I get to choose my app and I'm gonna go lame YouTube TA. That means everything it's building about this source type, how the source type works will be found now inside this app. Sweet. There I go, I hit next, I choose where do I want to store it. I highly recommend you pick this. I'm going to put it in lame training. I could create a new index if I have it. Um, but again, this only works if you have, um, well, I guess in this situation, since you're building an app, uh, it'll, it'll carry over that index for you. But just remember that the index needs to exist on your system, in your app, you want to make mention of it, and you want to make sure that index actually exists on the indexer, so when you send those logs in, you can actually do something with them. So I hit review. It's going to create an input type of an uploaded file. Its file name is going to be MySQL JSON. We're going to get a source type, host, index, we're good. All right, I hit submit, and I can start searching, and I should have those logs in there. Yep, logs are ingested. Now that's only useful for this machine. Um, it doesn't do me any good 
it's still not I need to I need to get on a remote machine but that's we take it in steps so now we know that we've got it ingested we're good to go let's now do um, one more I'm going to flip to ingesting a CSV so I'm going to go add data we're going to upload and I'm going to grab this CSV file And look what it did. It noticed, hey, I think this is a CSV. And it went and grabbed the first line from every one of those packets because I left my CSV file. I kept the header there. If you don't keep the header, you're going to have to manually type in each one of these. Not the end of the world, but then you would almost call it unstructured. But at least, um, if you can get a CSV file with the header on there and ingest that, you're golden. And so thereby it just took that first line, it took it and it's it's all good to go. Again, I don't want to save it as CSV because I might have multiple CSV type in datas on my system. So I'm going to call this lame um, CSV special. No, keep it lame. Keep it CSV ingest. Horrible source type. So let's see. This is. These are network connections, so we're going to call it lame con CSV, something like that. I don't even have to put the CSV, but I'm doing it so it keeps it simple for you guys to know. Um, I don't want to put in CS monitoring. I want to put it in. I love how it just constantly changes around where it thinks it should put it. I'm going to put it in the Splunk YouTube TA. I'm going to hit save, and we're golden. We're good to go. I hit next. Choose the index you want it to go to. I want to go to Lame Training. Check these. Yep, file name source. We're good to go. And submit. I can start the search. And I have my data. If I run this in verbose mode, it's all parsed. Sweet. So let's go look at this in practice. I'm going to SSH. Okay. So if I do that, I'm going to and I'm going to I should be able to find my lame um, YouTube TA. There it is. Let's clear this out, show the screen. It has created a default and a local file. If I go look at the local, I have created a props file. And what we see is, oh, look, there's my MySQL underscore JSON. There is all the things that are necessary to create that source type. I don't want to have to figure it out, so I'm going to let Splunk do it for me. We're set. I've got two source types. It's in this app. And so if I package this app up and send it on its way, we don't have to uh, do anything to make this work. And so that's really, that's, that makes, that's one step down. We now know that we'll parse the data correctly. All right, the next thing we want to do, we want to ingest this data. That was cool that I manually set the file up, but we wanted to actually monitor for this information. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to go data inputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to monitor and we're going to go find those files locally. I'm going to, they're listed here, files and directory. You make sure those files are on your Splunk instance that this is running on. In its directory, I'm going to go to home. And there is lame example. And I'm going to grab the MySQL JSON. Select. Do I want to continuously monitor or index once? In this situation, you want to continuously monitor. And you come down and you go hit next. It works just fine. But again, it went back to this JSON. We don't want this JSON. We want to use the one we were already using. And so we should find there's my MySQL JSON. Select it. Now it's going to use that source type on it. 
next what index what app context lame tube uta you want to make sure you check that do not put it somewhere else otherwise you have to go find those config files and move them and i'm going to come down and put it in lame training and we're good so we're going to file monitor we're going to monitor this path we're going to continuously monitor here's your source type here's your app context make sure all those match up your host your index and you're good to go I could hit the start searching. There's no point to it. I already know it's working. Um, settings, we're going to add data again, and let's put that CSV in. Come down here, monitor. Uh, let's do it a different way. We can go data inputs this way, just so you can see there's multiple ways of doing it. Settings, I'm going to monitor a file and directory. I'm going to add a new. I'm going to browse. Home. This time I'm going to use the CSV, select. I'm going to continuously monitor. And let's go look at my CSV options. If I type CSV, what's kind of the nice part of putting the CSV in there is I should be able to find it. And it didn't show up. All right. Lame. Con. CSV. There it is. That's the one I created. Select it. Boom. It comes in all that format. Again, we want to use my source, not theirs. We go next. Make sure you're using the right app. What you want to host. Pick your index. Lame training. And hit review. Make sure all these match. File monitor. Is it the right path? Continuously monitor, et cetera, et cetera. Submit. And you're good to go. All right. So now let's go look and see what it's done. I now do a new, I'm going to clear the screen, do a new, yep, there's a new listing, and we now have an inputs.conf. If I go into that, we can see that it is doing a monitor colon slash slash. That's how it always works. And in Linux, you get a third slash. On a Windows, you only have two slashes. People will sometimes ask, why do you have three slashes? Well, it's because monitor colon slash slash is the Splunk piece saying, hey, this is monitoring. Um, and then Linux uses the slash naming, naming convention. A Windows would not start with a slash. It would start with like C colon, whatever. Anyway, so I can see here's my MySQL JSON. It's disabled as false, meaning it's turned on. We are going to be, we are actively monitoring. Uh, we're, the host will go in as big Splunk. The index will be lame training. And the source type will be MySQL JSON. This will monitor here, and we're going to hit fault. It, lame training lame con csv we're good to go and now i can actually go this is actually monitoring the file if i make any changes to that uh those director those those uh files they'll come they'll, they'll log in so just like it's a logging system we're actually all good to go so the only thing i need to do is i would actually want to go to my nano inputs.conf and I would want to change this stanza for where it's at on the remote system. If I'm going to go deploy this somewhere else, if it's not, if I'm not monitoring a file on my instance of Splunk, I'm going to want to point it to the location of the file somewhere else and make sure that that's working. Uh, so I'm going to point to that directory. So it, it might be, and so I would just change it here. Maybe it's in, um, it could be in var logs. Oops, probably shouldn't erase all of that. I'm going to go exit out. Nope, let's not save. Um, it could. I want to keep the file, but maybe it's in. Var, log, MySQL. So you just put the path to it, and you're good to go. Anyway, if you do that, then you're going to want to install this on. Usually, you use a universal forwarder if it's like a if it's not got a Splunk Enterprise situation on it, and you will deploy that app to there. Um, I'm going to put videos up on using apps uh, deployment servers. If that's not clear to you, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I will put videos up for it. I haven't done them yet, but I don't want to make this video really long by going into deployment servers. But you'll want to deploy that. The big thing is you want to make sure you don't need this inputs.comp file on your indexer. It's not essential, but the... We're not going to save that. This props file, this is the biggest reason 
that I find that some your data, well, the second biggest reason, that data doesn't come in. If this props file, it, it, you usually want to put the props file on the indexer and on the, uh, the the universal forwarder, the system that's pulling those logs. It just makes things work better if you put that in there. Uh, so what I tend to do is I bundle up the, pat the app, I push it out to my indexer and to my universal forwarder, and I'm golden. The other thing I could do, I could make two apps, and I could go, one of them has this inputs f.conf disabled, and the other one has it enabled. But the fact is, if the file doesn't exist, it's not going to really take up any resources. It's a best practice to not have inputs.conf file running on files that don't exist. That would be the problem with copying this app to two different locations. But it's really not that big a deal, um, especially when you're starting to learn. But so you could set two, but uh, it's not too difficult to make this a second app. All you need to do is come down to um, I will be in default, this uh, app.comp file, rename it something else. So you'd copy the folder, make two copies of it, rename the, the folder, rename this label, something else, maybe you call it lame YouTube TA indexer, and then you change the name of the folder. So instead of it being lame YouTube TA, you call it lame, TA, lame YouTube TA indexer. The second part, naming the folder a different is not that important, but if it's sitting on your deployment server, you can't have two apps with the same name. So you can you need to, changing this helps, but the big thing is make sure you change the label. As long as the labels are different in the apps, they won't conflict and you can have the, both apps running. On your, you can have them both on your deployment server. You push one to your indexer, push one to your deployment server, and you're good to go. Uh, sorry, one to your uh, indexer and one to your universal forwarder. Um, that is as simple as it gets to uh, put these files in. I hope that helps. I hope this uh, helps you on your journey from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. And please look down below, look at the other videos in this. Uh, th this should be, there should be multiple videos below. Follow this where we'll talk about troubleshooting when it doesn't work, which does happen every now and then. All right, like, like this channel, subscribe to it if you do. If you have requests for other videos, please put that below and um, hope you'll continue watching.